So summer solstice practice. Which is I, the turn skin, is it? Mm. Yes, I put the blinds down. I just realised I forgot to ring Carol. <laughs> she hopefully she was from me. <laughs> she was coming. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, um, so you know, sorry, that's fine. So summer solstice. So um, lift and roll the shoulders. Breathing in, turn the head to the left. Breathing out, turn the head to the right. In to the left. And out to the right. Come back to the centre. Breathing in, raise the hands up. Palms together. Come through the centre. Acknowledging the heart centre, the sun coming through down to the solar plexus, also the sun, hands onto the shins, half lift, half salute to the sun, breathing out, soften in. Breathing in, half lift, and when you're ready, breathing out, stay where you are. Breathing in, soften the knees, press the feet down and roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing. Breathing in, raising the arms up, and then just circle the arms, the wrists down, and circle the wrists the other way. Hands together at the heart centre. Soften the knees, circle the arms up, Palms together, come through the centre, has half sweep to the sun again, hands onto the shins, half lift, breathing out, soften in. Breathing in, half lift, and stay here as you breathe out. Soften the knees. Press the feet down and roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing. Hands up, stretch your fingers, and then just circle the wrists down. Lift and roll one shoulder, and lift and roll the other shoulder. Step forward with your left foot. So this is half warrior but also shoulder exercise and neck and eye. Just make a semi-fist. And your hand, left hand can be loose or it can hold your hip or hold your thigh, just be comfortable. Breathing in, circle the right arm forward. Your eye is following your thumb. If you've got stiffness in your shoulder, then keep your elbow bent to help you. And then reversing that circle. Eyes lifting up disconnects the um, eyes from the stress centers of the brain. So this becomes a mindfulness exercise a shoulder exercise and a neck exercise. And then just release the hand. Step the left foot back. Just sway from side to side. just gentle fist with your hand and then the same on this side coming forward with the arm just notice 
if your hips are turning as you move or whether your hips stay to the front. Should they stay to the front? Well, do you know, I think probably yogically they should do, but um, I would say just an awareness and do what feels right for you. And then circle your arm in the opposite direction. It's hard not to, isn't it? Twist your hip back. Mm. And then as this is the summer solstice, come to the top of the mat, a very gentle salute to the sun. Breathing in, soften the knees, circle the arms up. Look up if you can, otherwise look forward. Breathing out, bend the elbows, bend the knees, and come to place the hands on the ground to either side of your feet, perhaps in front of your feet. Step back with your right foot, stretch the right leg out, and bring the right knee to the ground. Just feel the stretch in the right hip. And then slide the left foot back. So you're kneeling. Just sway the hips from side to side. And you might find but as your hips go to one direction, you look over the shoulder, the opposite shoulder, to the direction of your hips. And then dipping the back, looking up, rounding the back, chin to chest. Dip in the back and rounding chin to chest. And a couple of times in your own time. And when you round your back, normally you initiate the movement from the tailbone and just ripple up the spine, but there is another visualization where you imagine a magnet on the center of your spine, just lifting you up. And then come to have your knees slightly wider apart and come into puppy pose. Perhaps forehead on the ground, maybe elbows on the ground. Stretching into the upper back. Tummy in. And then come to kneeling again. And then hands to the left and foot to the right hands to either side of the right foot, just stretch into that right hip. But to come up, bring your knee to a 90 degree angle, tuck the toes of the left foot, tummy in, lift up the left knee and step or slide however your left foot to your right foot, hands on the shins, half lift, breathing out. Curl in, half lift, and stay here as you breathe out. Pressing the feet down, bend the knees, and roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing. 
and then raise the arms up, stretch up, join the thumbs and just sway slightly from side to side. Come to the centre, lower the arms, lift and roll the shoulders and clasp the hands behind you. Aim the knuckles to the ground and open the shoulders. Take a breath in here. Just feel the lift of the chest. And then separate the hands. Slide the hands down the backs of the legs as you bend the knees to the floor. And then step the left foot back, extend the left leg for a nanosecond, and then left knee to the ground. Slide the right foot back, you're in tabletop. And once more, sway your bottom from side to side. And this time we're going to come into quarter dog. So bring the right arm across you, palm down, elbow down, bottom in the air, bottom slides back as far as you feel comfortable or we'll keep it up, and slide the left arm forward. You can rest your forehead on your right forearm, you can rest your forehead on the ground, just be comfortable and feel the stretch under your right arm, under your left arm, the left side. Experiment because you can bring your bottom back slightly and increase the stretch. Even here, you're engaging your lower abdomen in. Perineum just slightly engages in. And then sliding the left arm back, come to tabletop again, and just sway once more gently from side to side. And then come to cross your left hand across your body, slide your right arm forward, Maybe rest your forehead on the back of your right, your left hand and stretch out the right side. Quarter dog. If that's tight anywhere, then bend the elbow to make it less tight. Gently slide the right arm back and then come to kneel up and then breathing in, raise the arms up, stretching, breathing out, bring the hands to the floor and table top. Slightly rounding the back, chin to chest. Slide the hands towards you as you move up. Hands up. And again, lower the hands. Take it up. Dip the back. Looking up. Round the back, chin to chest. Slide the hands towards your knees. And lift up. Breathing out, turn to the right and lower the hands. Breathing in, come to the centre, arms up. And breathing out, turn to the left. Breathing in, hands up. And then breathing out, hands back down, 
comes to mind. Breathing in, dipping the back. Breathing out, rounding chin to chest. And this time, drawing the bottom towards the heels. Stretch out your lower back. If that means widen your knees slightly, then do so. Just slightly rock the weight from one knee to the other so that your head is slightly going to the inner of a part of one arm and then the other. And just moving. And then sliding the hands back to the knees. You might want to bring them together a little bit more to come up stretching up and then just circling the wrists down. Lift and roll the shoulders and aim the knuckles towards the ground behind you. Opening the chest, opening the shoulders. And then release. Bring the hands back once more to the ground. Breathing in, dipping the back. Breathing out, rounding the back. Dipping the back. And as you round the back, chin comes to the chest. Bottom goes towards the heels. Straight down. And then bend the elbows and come back to table top again. Stretch the right leg behind you, tap the right toes under, and just very gently move forwards and backwards. Then release the right knee to the ground and slide the left leg back. And then just come forwards and backwards. left knee comes to the ground. So we're going to be dipping the back and rounding it chin to chest, but if you want to do a downward dog, then as you dip the back, then as you round it, tuck your toes and come into a downward dog, but soon I know that you will do probably another cat can. Downward dog, lengthen the um, spine, then straighten your knees, and then walk the dog by bending one knee and then bending the other knee. Tummy in, perineum engages slightly. Stretching back with both legs and then both knees to the ground. And then come to join Sue. Oh, she was, <laughs> she was just stretching, just at the moment, to stretch the arms out into child's pose. And come back to kneeling. Just sway your bottom from side to side, and that might be enough for you. But if you want to walk your hands a little bit further, we're going to come to up dog, which is quite strengthening, but go from side to side if you don't want to do up dog. <laughs> then come back to tabletop. Collapsed dog. <laughs> and I want you to do just one round, but you'll miss out downward dog. Um, so, so slide the hands to the knees, lift up, bring the hands back to tabletop, dip in the back, in your looking up and then rounding. You might have to do that again soon. But as we round, we're going to come into downward dog. And then bend both knees back down to the earth. Flatten the feet, bottom towards the heels. Slide the hands to the knees. Kneel up. Reach up. And then turn to the right, place the left hand on the um, navel, right hand on the waist, 
turn to look over the right shoulder. Come back to the centre and bring the right hand to the navel and the left hand comes to the side. Turn to look over the left shoulder. And then just very gently come to bring the bottom to the side, bring the legs out. Just bounce the legs a couple of times. Pat or rub them. And then circle the ankles a couple of times in one direction and then circle the ankles a couple of times in the other direction. Open the feet and relax. And then we're going to come to lying on the mat. We'll start with um, knees bent, feet hip width apart. Hands, palms down. And just take a couple of breaths, or palms on the abdomen, breathing in through the nose and breathing out through the mouth. And then just very gently begin to sway the knees from side to side. And you may like to bring your feet slightly wider than hip width apart, more towards the edges of the mat. It's your choice. As you sway the knees, the hips will lift off from the mat. And your knee will drop towards the centre. And then coming back again. And you can begin to let the head join in slightly with the movement. And don't worry if your head travels towards or away from the knees. Just do what's natural for you. very gently come back to the centre. You might want to bring your feet more towards hip width apart. Hands here, palms down. And just a couple of pelvic tilts. Going to work on the lower lumbar vertebrae. If your back is strong enough, you can begin to lift your bottom off the ground, but that's optional. It's a back strengthener, but your back's got to be strong enough to lift up. So it's just a very mini nod to bridge. Flatten the back, press the feet down, lift the bottom a little bit, or a lot. Chin comes to the chest. And then just lower and roll the back down. And then just come back to pelvic tilt. This time bring the feet together. This becomes like an oyster movement or a clam movement. Open the right knee to the right. 
you might find that your left knee just tries to follow, that's all right. Bring the right knee back upright and then open the left knee to the left. Just once and then to each side. So it's exploring the hip movement. And then explore when you open the knee to the right, let the left knee join it and just roll over slightly to the right, lifting the left hip up. And then bring the left knee back upright, the right follows it, both knees are upright. And then your left knee goes to the left, and your right knee follows it. Your right hip lifts off the floor. You can really roll it and stretch into your lower back. And then just a few times in your own breath pattern. Try and let the body, the weight of the body, sink to the ground and the ground almost comes up to meet your body. Let the weight fall heavy. And then bring both knees upright and feel that you can press your feet into the ground, lifting your bottom, just rearranging yourself to be comfortable. If Try and think which of your hips tends, if your hip does indeed play up, which is generally worse. And then start with your better side. So in my case, my, if anything plays up, it's my right hip. So I will start with my left side. So leaving the good, um, the hip, uh, the foot where the good hip, that side alone, lift up the knee, chin to chin, hug the knee in towards you of the bad knee. And with the knee, just think of making a figure of eight, still holding it. And you can choose whether your eight is horizontal or vertical. So I like, in this configuration, to think of vertical eight. And I'm very gently drawing a figure of eight. You can make the eight as slow or as quick as you want, and you can make it as big or as small as you want. And notice that you've drawn your eight as you would normally draw an eight on paper. So you can keep to that eight, but you also have the invitation of drawing your eight in the opposite direction. If that messes with your mind, don't worry, it's just an invitation. So for hip movement, this is really, again, very helpful. And then very gently, let supporting the, the knee let your uh, foot come back down to the earth and just a couple of sways from side to side with both knees really massaging across the bottom and then coming back to the center and then focus on the opposite knee hugging the knee into the chest and think of your figure of eight, whether it be horizontal or vertical, and just start to draw your figure of eight with your knee. Your foot will follow, and your knee can be moving a little bit, or it can be moving a lot.
so this explores the rotational movement of the leg in the hip socket. And when we walk or play tennis or do whatever we do, we don't necessarily always use the movement in the full rotational aspect that that's where arthritis can kind of get a foothold. And the bits that we don't need, the stagnation, the stationary bits, stagnation bits. And then again, the invitation is not, it's optional. If you've made your eight in one direction, you can think about reversing that direction, the way that you're drawing it. Reflects our brain patterns and just challenging our brain patterns to do something subtly different is apparently quite good for us. It's nothing too much, it's just a, a note that we favour a certain movement or a certain way of doing something. And then hug both knees into the chest. And we come to a very classic somatic movement, the sensory movement, where we just rock from side to side. And you can rock right over onto the back of your upper arm, or not. Again, how much you want to move is up to you. You can have your knees slightly wider apart to accommodate any tummy. So this is kind of coming back to that oscillating movement sort of that is everywhere in nature, comes back to our apparently our embryonic movement and is very fundamental in the somatic movement of exploring freestyle movement. It massages the lower back as well, the upper bottom, the lower back, massages across the back of the head. The brain starts to tune out. It creates space at the lower back. So if there's any compression, it's quite helpful. And the slightly harder floor gives a greater massage as the weight of our body almost does the massaging for us. And then you can explore as you're going from side to side, maybe letting the knee move slightly away from you, slightly bringing it in as you rock to the other side. Maybe just letting the knee drift a few inches away from you and then hugging it in. It's all the time lowering the blood pressure as the breathing slows down, the nervous system is being calmed down. Come to hug your knees into the chest. And breathing in, raise the left leg and the left arm behind you. You can bend at the left elbow, extend the left foot as an option, left heel. And then breathing out, hug the left knee into the chest. Just rock a little bit from side to side before coming to the right side. And then breathing in, raise the right arm, right leg. Maybe extend the right heel. Feel a stretch under the arm. And then when you're ready, breathing out, hug the right knee into the chest. And just rock from side to side. And then do that once more to each side. Breathing in, raising the left. Stretching lingering if you need to. Come back when you're ready. And go to the other side. And then the knees into the chest. Just drop in your hands to hold under the thighs and raise both legs, clasping your hands, knees slightly bent and just slightly rock from side to side on the base of the spine. 
downward dog is an inversion, but if we didn't do downward dog, then this is an invitation to do a very gentle inversion. And then very gently hug the knees into the chest. And come to a very familiar, hug the knees into the chest. And then breathing in, let the knees drift to arm's length. And again, hugging the knees into the chest. And to arm's length. And just do this a few times to your own breath pattern. Any time you've got a stiff back, or even sore hips. Stiff back is this very gentle hugging in. And the figure of eight or circular knees is very helpful for the hips. And then very gently place supporting them to the leg when you're ready, your hands onto your knees, under the back. Bring the feet to the ground. Just sway the knees from side to side. And in your own time, we're going to think about coming up to a seated position. Taking time. No hurry. fluidity to the back. The chin to the chest as a reminder that it activates the vagus nerve, so it's calming for the nervous system. We're beginning to again affect our breath, it's almost like a breath work and moving meditation. And then just release that. And then breathing in, circle the hands, a low up. Bringing deck down through to the heart. Again, bringing in, circling up. Up to the heart. And the third time coming up. Arms meet. And then come down through the heart. And then breathing in, hands out. Breathing out, hands back to the heart, either palms together or hands to the heart. Breathing in, breathing out. Hands to the heart. And breathing in, breathing out. Hands to the heart. And then the next little part to finish very much carries into the, sol the solstice and there's an option to chant or not. So breathing in and breathing out, just connect to the feet and the chant there is Om Bhu, B-H-U-E, B-H-U-H, Om Bhu. So it's a connection to the earth, physical world or physical self. And then breathing out, bring the hands to the lower abdomen, on Bhuval. This is our astral body, our desire, our breath, and the world becoming. Breathing in and coming out to the navel, on Suval. It's a mental body, the world of thinking. And you have that, that gut feeling that connects to the ancient brain. Think about that. Breathing in and hands come back to the heart, Om Maha, and that's a causal or silent mind, the world of emotion, and that is compassion heart. And then opening and come to the throat, Om um, Jana, J A N A H, it's the world of creative generation. Bringing the mind, the hands out and 
browse on Tapa, T-A-P-A-H, the world of intuition. And then as you breathe, hands come out and come to the top of the head, Om Sat Yam, S-A-T-Y-A-M, the world of absolute truth. Just for a moment, cradle your head with your hands, connecting to the um, crown, but also it connects to the, uh, the, world, the energy of the world outside. You've got a lot of acupressure points under those hands. And then just very gently bring the hands to the heart and take a bow for yourself. Thank you.